Welcome back to Allison Customs Project Car TV. And what I'm working on today is a gate and some hinges for my balcony. So where I pull up and use the forklift to load stuff up on top of the balcony, I need a big gate that swings closed so when people are walking around up there, don't risk falling off. What I've decided to make is a, is a barrel hinge and the bolts are going to be my pin. This is some one inch uh, tubing, DOM tubing, and it's uh, uh, 7 eighths inside, so it's a pretty thin wall. But we're going to use the bolt slid down in there for part of it. That'll make one side solid. And then the top half of the hinge will have a brass bushing inside this tubing. And we're going to turn down the bolt to fit. And the only reason I picked these bolts, they're 7 eighths diameter uh, shanked bolts. And rather than go buy... 20 feet of 7 8 inch solid stock, I could buy two bolts for $4.79 or something like that at Tractor Supply. So we're gonna cut the heads off, turn them down, just, just use a little bit of sandpaper or a file, turn them down just enough to fit inside the tubing nice and snug, and then the threaded end, we'll turn those down to three quarters of an inch, which will be the inside of the bushing size. The bushings aren't here yet, so when I get those be able to finish the hinges but we can do all the machine work today and then we can begin building the uh, actual gate um, out on the floor here and then I'm also going to add two uh, greasers put a couple grooves in there so the grease has some place to go and then the other thing we're going to do is it's not just going to be a straight barrel hinge you know it'd be it'd be way too simple I'm going to make it to where the gate wants to stay open so we're going to put a slope in on the uh, hinge in the hinge where the, the top half and the bottom half meet so that the gate will always want to swing to the open position and you'll be locking it closed.
Okay, well, we've got it cut off, made them fit them to size, I've turned these bushings down, and I went ahead and pushed those in there. And I cut, cut an angle on them, so when I cut it in half, instead of just cutting it straight in half, I put that angle on them. That set up there where the, where the angles come together is the open position, and the closed position will be the 90 degrees off so that it'll have that point up there. And we'll just adjust our gate height based on the hinge being open here and closed here. So as soon as you unlatch it, it's always going to want to open. And that's just to keep it from swinging back in front of the uh, forklift while you're working. Um, I've numbered all these, and then you can see here I drilled uh, some, oh, I think those are about a 5 16 hole. And that's so when I put it on this bottom part, I can go ahead and weld it onto there. And that doesn't really matter where it ends up. And then the top part, I've got a hole in there. And that's so we can tap it and put a grease cert in there. And then that'll line up with this groove that we cut into the, to the stock. So, um, so the next thing is go ahead and put this in, get it where we want it, and weld that up. And do the same for the other side. And then we can go ahead and tap this out for the greaser, install it, and then the hinge will be ready to work. So it'll, it will spin like so. And of course the bottom part's the part that's not spinning, the top part's the part that'll be spinning. But Because we're using an inch and a half thick material and this is only one inch, we would run into each other. The post would run into the gate. So we need to add at least a quarter inch spacer on the two sides where we're going to be doing our welding. So we'll find us some quarter inch material, just some square stock would be perfect. We weld a strip on there and then one on the side where the gate's going to be.
Okay, so I've added two latches, one that's a sliding pin and one that's like, like a regular gate latch. And that's just so that you have to intentionally unlock this so that it's, it is a solid safety rail most of the time. And the only other thing I want to do is I'm going to add a foot under this end to hold it up just so that all this weight isn't just hanging on those hinges and on the latch. And that'll just make it last forever. Um, and then, so I said that's the last thing I'm going to do for the gate. One other thing I'm going to do is take a piece of angle iron and weld it to this upright post and kind of come around the side of the wall here and bolt it into the wall and weld it to this post. And I'll do it on the inside so you can't see it. That's just to make this a little more stable. Uh, with it tied into the ceiling and into the floor, it's not really moving, but this can flex just a little bit. So we can take that up just by putting that piece of angle right here at the end. Okay, so we added a, a latch on this side as well as a latch on this side. This one, when you close the gate, it catches it automatically, and then this one, just for security to lock it in so that this becomes a good solid rail. Um, I also added a foot down here at the bottom, and getting it from the side, um, I put a curve on the front so as the gate closes, it just kind of comes up and automatically if it's hanging down low at all, it'll bring itself up onto the floor without needing to lift. And I did that just because of how long this gate is. So this gate is 110 and a half inches from this point down to the other side. And so that, that foot just takes the weight off the hinges when it's in the park position, the uh, handrail position. And then when uh, I also added this piece of angle iron here, and that just is to help support this post a little bit with this upper hinge here. All kind of ties everything together. And then that post is tied into the ceiling beam along with this post, which uh, really just makes for a nice solid latching point. And then we unclip both of these. Push the gate out. You can see it takes very little effort for it to swing out and then because of the design of the hinge, now that's the resting place. This is where it wants to stay. Kind of see. Wants to stay in that open position. And then when we close it, I'll try and catch it where the foot. See that? It just comes all the way up, latches in, and then we can lock it in with our and lock it in with this, just to make sure it's a good safe handrail, safety rail. So that's it for that project. Uh, we still have more railing to do as we finish more of the balcony, and then there'll be another gate on the other end down there, roughly the same size, um, that just gives us a second place to load pallets up here into our shelving. So you can see I've got engines on that pallet. I have a full uh, independent rear suspension on that one and uh, the goal is just to have a place for probably four to six pallets up here for storage so we're slowly getting getting all this built up you can see here and actually i already have another pallet here with parts for the uh rustang including radiator intercooler Honestly, this box has turbos and other stuff in it. So one of these days, we'll get back on that project and be able to move forward. Well, we're all finished up. With the exception of this top rail, everything else is just scrap steel. Most of it coming from a project I did a couple of years ago in the building that we've torn down back in September of 2020. And that was, I built a bunch of pallets shelving uh, for storage in that building. Well, when I tore the building down, I took all that out and... So with the exception of this top rail, all of the rest of this is, is uh, scrapped from that, except, of course, the rebar. Two pieces were left over uh, from when I was building this shop, and the other two pieces I had to go buy. So I bought those two, and I bought the uh, latches for this end, 
And then I bought the brass bushing, or it's not brass, it's bronze bushing that went into the hinges. Everything else was here, so pretty inexpensive project. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Look for more videos coming out as we get further into the new year. January's pretty cold out here today. It's only about uh, 14 degrees outside, and of course running the heaters makes so much noise can't really hear me. But we'll get back on all of these projects and move forward. So again, please like and subscribe. We'll see you again next week on Alice Customs Project Car TV.